All right, welcome back everyone. Dr. Ben, not a real doctor here. Today, let's talk a little bit about caffeine. What is it, what does it do? And I wanna explore a little bit how my recent reactions to caffeine, which have been less than awesome, relate to caffeine and what it is and what it does. Don't leave me like that, it's decaf. Now first and foremost, caffeine is a toxin. It's a toxin created by plants to keep things from eating their seeds. In the case of the coffee bean, caffeine is in the coffee bean, so insects won't eat the beans. If insects eat the beans, they're most likely going to die, so things don't eat the beans. Now that's not what we use it for, we use it more as a stimulant. And it has a stimulating effect on our nervous system. And real quick, before we dive too much into this, I'm gonna give you a quick overview on the ventral system, the uh, polyvagal theory, just so you understand how our nervous system works. At the top, you have the ventral system, which is where we're on our happy place, okay? This is business as usual, we're relaxed and going about our business. Next, you have the sympathetic system, and that's your fight or flight system. And then at the bottom, you have your dorsal system, which is the oldest part of the nervous system. And that's where you just shut down. You conk out, disconnect, life's too hard, I'm gonna go lay in bed all day. Now, when you drink caffeine, it's probably gonna knock you into the sympathetic system. That's why people like it, you have a lot of energy, you get stuff done. But that is affecting your nervous system. And if you're already stressed out, it's gonna have a different effect than you might expect. Now, if you're already stressed out, caffeine could be the straw that breaks the camel's back, so to speak, and push you straight from sympathetic into dorsal and then bloop, complete shutdown. You just can't do it, which is what had been happening to me over the past couple months. It became more and more regular as my stress level went up that the cup of coffee just, that was it. I was done for a couple hours until my body re-regulated. Now, the problem with caffeine comes in that it is an external source of stimulation. It's a chemical that goes into your body, which is much harder for your body to regulate. Just for example, in his book, Waterlogged, Dr. Timothy Noakes talks about having people die from hyperthermia while sitting in an ice bath. They could not get their temperature down to a safe level. All of those people who died from being too hot sitting in an ice bath had consumed caffeine that day. And that's not to like scare you or anything, it's just to let you know that an external source stimulating you, a chemical stimulating you, is much harder for your body to deal with than just your body itself. It creates a system that your body isn't really equipped to handle as efficiently as its own systems. And there's another side effect here that is of particular interest to a movement-minded person like yourself if you want to eliminate pain and move past muscle tension. In what is probably my favorite and most used reference book, the Trigger Point Therapy Workbook by Claire Davies. Claire Davies actually mentions that if you have muscle tension issues, if you have a muscle that you're trying to get to release but you're not having much success, he highly recommends that you skip caffeine because caffeine is a stimulant. It stimulates your nervous system, which, which also stimulates muscle tension. I've been working on my mid-back from something that has been an issue for, well, over a decade now. And what I would notice is that when I would have a cup of coffee, those muscles that were already tight would tighten down even more, sometimes to the point where they would start to put a little pressure on nerves and things would start going numb. Um, the tension would radiate to surrounding muscles and breathing would become more challenging. Um, all these muscles are connected throughout your system through connective tissue and through the nervous system. So when one muscle is tight, it's not just one muscle that's gonna be tight. It's gonna be a system, a connected network of muscles that are gonna be tight. So if you're already stressed out, the caffeine could push you into shutdown. If you're already stressed out, you also probably have extra muscle tension. So the caffeine is probably going to create more muscle tension. 
If you're in pain, the muscle tension will probably make the pain worse. Now, I'm not telling you to not drink coffee or consume caffeine. We're all grown ass people here, so you can do whatever you want. I'm just providing information. I have discovered that for me, um, more than like a cup or two of some sort of caffeine is not real awesome for me in my current situation. It's just, it makes my life worse, to put it frankly. So I usually drink decaf these days. Uh, coffee seems to hit me the hardest, so if I do want to have something, I usually have some green tea. But this is just, know your, know your body, right? Listen to your body. If your body's telling you that this is causing you a problem, then maybe it's time to look at other options. Yeah, I know it sucks. Coffee's real tasty, but that's why there's decaf. But these are the important decisions that you have to pay attention to if you want to live a happy, healthy life. I'm not saying don't drink coffee. I'm saying listen to your body and do what your body tells you that it's ready to handle. Well, sorry to rain on your coffee parade today, but this is my personal experience. You may have a different experience. Maybe caffeine doesn't cause you any issues at all. I don't know, do an experiment. Give it a boot for 30 days and see how you feel. Anyway, food for thought. That's all I got for you today. If you liked the video, smash the thumbs up, share the video with your friends. If you haven't already subscribed, please consider subscribing. And until next time, I don't know, maybe have some decaf, but keep your life in motion.